At Columbia Regional Program, our students are at the center of everything we do, helping them to develop the skills they will need to reach their full potential and make the best of their lives. Columbia Regional Program serves students impacted by the following six conditions. Autism Spectrum Disorder, Visual Impairment and Blindness, Deaf and Hard of Hearing, Deaf Blindness, Orthopedic Impairment, and Traumatic Brain Injury. There are eight regional programs across the state. Columbia Regional Program serves students in Multnomah, Clackamas, Hood River, and Wasco Counties. Regional programs were created in 1981 by the legislature to provide services for children with specific disabilities that are relatively rare um, in special education, so they're, they're identified as low incidence disabilities. We have around 100 staff. Most of our teachers are itinerant teachers, so that means that they have a, a desk here, but then they are out in all of their schools serving the students in their home districts. They're highly specialized staff, highly specialized teachers that go into their respective fields because they have a passion for students with these unique disabilities. We're partners with school districts and we collaborate with their teams to provide those special education services. Let's take a closer look at each of those services by disability. In autism, we partner closely with districts to provide regional services to students with ASD. Here's how it works. With our support, each district designates staff to consult, problem solve, and meet the day-to-day -day needs of their students with ASD. In addition, Columbia Regional Program has a team of licensed ASD specialists and support staff that provide training and technical assistance designed to complement and strengthen the services provided by district personnel. For example, the Columbia Regional Autism Team offers a wide range of face-to-face -face and online professional development opportunities that emphasize implementation of evidence-based practices. We host nationally recognized guest presenters on topics including cognitive behavioral intervention, teaching executive skills, and augmentative communication. And we facilitate regular training events for parents and caregivers of children with ASD. We support district consultants in other ways too, by providing them with access to a large lending library of autism books and curriculum, by offering an extensive toolkit of online resources, and by providing a venue for autism professionals to connect and learn from one another. The specialists in autism from all of our districts come together on a monthly basis to talk about recent evidence-based practices, to receive training together, to problem solve together. I work in the autism program and we work with districts and ESDs and help them build capacity and do some training and coaching with their staff. We're like sort of that extra layer on the outside helping out with our certain kids. We found out that Isaiah was um, born congenitally blind at six months of age. At about four years old, he was then diagnosed with autism with the support of the Columbia Regional Program. It's provided us with the social skills that Isaiah's needed, um, the living skills, they are the ones that provided us the resources. Isaiah is just a good example of how kids can look so different when they're young and then they become older and they become a lot more independent and they use the systems that we've been teaching them. And I love working with people with autism because the strategies we put in place help them be so successful. I hope when people hear autism, they don't think sad. They think like, what great things will that person accomplish in their life? In blind and visually impaired services, we have a team of highly trained teachers of the visually impaired who work with students within their neighborhood schools, in program classrooms, and within the community. Our TVIs teach specialized skills across the following expanded core curriculum areas. Compensatory skills, including braille literacy, social interaction, independent living skills, recreation and leisure, assistive technology, self-determination, career education, and sensory efficiency. A number of our TVIs are also certified orientation and mobility specialists, teaching students how to move safely and independently in their environment. Some of our students have been working with our TVIs for many years, from early childhood on into high school. When I started in kindergarten, I had Mr. Wall, or Scott, and we would work on identifying and reading Braille. We have provided services for Ben since he was born. There are certain skills that make a blind person successful, and we refer to those as blindness skills. Um, it's learning how to use a cane, learning braille, 
um, learning technology, it's self-advocacy, um, all those things are important. So you have this teacher for the visually impaired that shows up that can come into a classroom and they can adapt and modify assignments, they can bring in technology, they can work on um, communication skills. One of the biggest attributes that Ben has is his love and enjoyment for technology and for a person who doesn't have sight that's going to be his guide to do everything that he wants to independently and he is a student that if I give him a task he will learn it in a day or less. He has really grown as far as his independence level. Our last summer um, he and his mom advocated for him to go to band camp. And Ben first asked me about going to band camp and he brought home, you know, he's like, I want to go to this band camp. And my first reaction was, there's no way. So I asked a few people at Columbia Regional and they said, absolutely, why shouldn't he go to band camp? And the more I thought about it, the more I thought, you know, he should go. He has every right to attend. And I got to do everything independently with no help from other people. It's been wonderful to see Ben and his family grow and, and learn new skills. Um, we have teachers here that remember Ben when he was one and now see him as a 16-year-old man and, and are so proud and excited of the skills he's learned. I mean, Columbia Regional is about the people. It's about the teachers, and they care so much about every student. Our deaf and hard of hearing services are extensive and include multiple programs. We have a team of itinerant teachers of the deaf and hard of hearing that serve students who use listening and spoken language to communicate. Our itinerant teachers provide instruction and self-advocacy and promote the development of language and literacy. They set up FM amplification systems. They train classroom teachers on how to reduce background noise and how to create acoustically favorable environments for their students. We operate special focus classrooms at the preschool, elementary, middle school, and high school levels. Our audiologists conduct evaluations, dispense hearing aids, and provide consultative support regarding hearing loss, assistive technology, and educational recommendations. We also have a speech-language pathologist and school psychologist on staff with specialized skills in evaluating and serving students who are deaf and hard of hearing. And finally, our sign language interpreters play an essential role. They're out there in classrooms ensuring that our students have access to spoken dialogue, instruction, and other sound information at school. I've always felt in Columbia Regional that there was a team for Taylor. Um, and I, I know there are teams for other kids too, but you know, just speaking for my son, the, the continuity between all the transitions he's made from, from preschool to middle school to high school to the transition program, there's just been this golden thread all along the way. My husband and I worked with Columbia Regional you know, to make all these things happen. Each year it just built on more more opportunity, more possibility, more color, and you know, you end up with a really a masterpiece. So Creston School and our middle school and high school classrooms provide instruction um, with specialized staff um, who are knowledgeable about deaf hard of hearing. When you have a low incidence population like deaf hard of hearing and they are significantly impacted due to their hearing loss, if there's just one of them in a school, um, it's really difficult to provide um, a rich environment that we are able to do here in our special focus classrooms. A lot of our deaf and hard of hearing kids have really restricted language, and because they have that restricted language, they, they don't have all the pieces that they need. In a special focus class, they can feel that success where they are and pull up rather than needing to be here. You need to fit this mold. In the focus classroom, we make it fit the kids. Our students are um, just students within the school. They participate in all the activities that other classrooms participate in. I myself used to be a CRP uh, student. I was, uh, started the preschool program all the way to high school and I graduated in that span and I went back to college and finished that and I, went, I wanted to work for her, our program and give back my experience and my motivation to help teach and be with the kids and I wanted to, it really inspired me to just, you know, be involved and work with CRP because I used to, I wanted to be a role model to the kids. When you see that light bulb go on, 
And to know that you're part of that process is an amazing feeling. There is no better job in the world than to know that you affect the lives of children, not for a moment, but for the lifetime. Our students who are deafblind require highly specialized services to realize their best potential to communicate, learn, and maximize their mobility. To support these students, we combine expertise from the blind and visually impaired and deaf and hard of hearing programs. Since we have reviewed both, we won't go into detail. Simply stated, we have designated staff from both programs who work in collaboration to provide training, consultation, and assistance for our students in the region who are impacted by deaf blindness. Our orthopedic impairment services have two primary components. The first is consultation and training. Our assistive technology and augmentative communication specialists travel across the region, helping students with complex motor and communication needs. They collaborate with teams to help students learn how to use speech generating devices, or how to use various switches to operate a wheelchair, a computer, or an adapted toy. The second component of OI services is our equipment bank. For regionally eligible students, we loan motor items such as standers, gate trainers, trikes, and adaptive chairs. We loan assistive technology items that provide students with alternative access methods. We also have dedicated communication devices available for trial. We have been serving Riley since she was in preschool. She recently graduated from high school and our staff continue to work with Riley on her use of specialized tools to access her computer, complete assignments, send emails, and connect with friends online. So I'm the original. It helped me a lot because um, was we were trying to get a computer through other programs. The unique thing about Riley is that she, we have taught her to use an eye gaze device and she isn't able to type. So she uses an eye gaze device to communicate, to send email, to Facebook, and she's looking for employment right now. I want to work with kids like me so I can tell them that what equipment are out there and and tell them that it's okay and not be afraid. Finally, for our students impacted by a traumatic brain injury, we have a TBI liaison on staff, serving as a connection between hospitals and schools, assisting districts and planning for a student's return to school following an injury. Our TBI liaison also provides consultation and training to staff and connects us to others around the state, including CBERT, the Center on Brain Injury Research and Training. We serve a relatively few number of students, but the services that we provide are highly impactful. We measure success by our children being able to live in their communities and live the life that they choose, that they have opportunities for equal access, that they can attend their home schools, that they can attend school with their peers, and that they graduate or complete secondary school with choices in their lives and able to advocate for themselves for what they want.